In the past decade, astronomers have witnessed three interstellar objects, ISOs, passing through the solar system. This included the enigmatic Oumuamua in 2017, the interstellar comet 2I Borisov in 2019, and 3I Atlas in July 2025. This latest object also appears to be a comet, based on recent observations that showed it was actively releasing water vapor as it neared the sun. The detection of these objects, which were previously theorized but never observed, has piqued interest in the origins of ISOs, their dynamics, and where they may be headed once they leave the solar system. Join our community of space enthusiasts, hit subscribe, and let's blast off together, since asteroids and comets are essentially material left over from the formation of planets. Studying ISOs could reveal what conditions are like in other star systems, without having to send interstellar missions there. In a recent paper, Shokruz Kakarov and Professor Abraham Loeb calculated the trajectories of all three interstellar visitors to determine where they came and apply age constraints. Their results indicate these ISOs originated from different regions in the Milky Way's disk and range in age from one to several billion years. Kakarov is a graduate student at Harvard University's astronomy department, whose work includes studies on interstellar objects, the trajectories of spacecraft like Voyager, direct imaging, and the flux of extragalactic dark matter. Professor Loeb is the Frank B. Baird Jr. Professor of Science at Harvard University and the Director of the Institute for Theory and Computation at the Harvard and Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. The paper that details their findings appeared online and is being reviewed for publication in astronomy and astrophysics. The discovery of Oumuamua kicked off a revolution in astronomy confirming the existence of ISOs and inspiring efforts to study them closer. As Kakarov told Universe Today via email, they've also transformed our understanding of galactic dynamics and the formation of planetary systems. Before one eye Oumuamua's discovery in 2017, we had no direct evidence that objects from other star systems could reach our solar system. These visitors provide unique samples of material from distant planetary systems offering insights into the chemical composition and physical properties of exoplanetary material that we cannot obtain through remote observations alone. They also serve as natural probes of the interstellar medium and galactic dynamics, revealing the gravitational interactions that shape stellar populations over billions of years. Since asteroids and comets are essentially material left over from the formation of planetary systems, the study of ISOs enables the study of other star systems without having to mount interstellar missions. Currently, the only viable means for sending spacecraft to neighboring star systems involves gram-scale wafercraft and light sails that are accelerated by direct energy arrays to a small fraction of the speed of light. Examples include Breakthrough Initiative's Starshot and the Institute for Interstellar Studies, I4Is, swarming Proxima Centauri concept. While these mission concepts could reach the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, within a human lifetime, they would be very expensive to mount. And it would be decades before we learned what conditions are like in neighboring star systems. But as Oumuamua, 2I Borisov, and 3I Atlas have demonstrated, ISOs pass through our solar system regularly each offering unique research opportunities. Determining where each ISO originated is the first step toward understanding the diversity and dynamics of stellar populations in the Milky Way. Said Kakarov, understanding ISO origins provides a deeper context for interpreting their physical and chemical properties. For example, knowing that 3I Atlas likely originated from an old stellar population, suggests it may have experienced different evolutionary processes than younger objects. This information helps us understand the diversity of planetary system architectures and the conditions under which objects are ejected into interstellar space. Also, tracing their origins helps identify potential source regions and ejection mechanisms, whether through gravitational scattering, stellar evolution, or other dynamical processes. For their purposes, Kakarov and Loeb ran a series of Monte Carlo numerical simulations using the Galpot Galactic Potential Model. 
a software package designed to calculate the gravitational potential of a galaxy. For each ISO, we generated 10,000 different possible trajectories by sampling from the observational uncertainties in their velocities and systematic uncertainties in the solar motion relative to the local standard of rest. We integrated each trajectory for one billion years in the Milky Way's gravitational potential to determine their maximum vertical excursions from the galactic plane. This statistical approach provides robust estimates of their orbital parameters and accounts for the significant uncertainties inherent in long-term orbital predictions. From this, they were able to numerically integrate the trajectories of these three interstellar objects back in time and relate them to potential stellar populations. Our analysis revealed that the three ISOs originate from distinct stellar populations with different ages and galactic locations, said Kakarov. Their results showed 3I Atlas is the oldest of the three, with a median age of 4.6 billion years and originated from the Milky Way's thick disk. This component is thicker than the galaxy's thin disk, where our sun resides, and is populated by older, lower metallicity stars. Wiumai Umuamua is relatively young by comparison, about 1 billion years, and originated from the thin disk where new stars are still forming. 2i Borisov falls between them in age, approximately 1.7 billion years old, and originated from the thin disk. This diversity suggests that ISOs are ejected from planetary systems throughout the galaxy's history, not just from young, recently formed systems. These results also offer a preview of what's to come, thanks to new observational facilities that will become operational in the coming years. Said Kakarov, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory's legacy survey of space and time will dramatically increase ISO detection rates potentially finding dozens of new interstellar objects per year. Future missions like the European Space Agency's Comet Interceptor could potentially help with an ISO for in-situ analysis. These facilities will enable statistical studies of ISO populations, allowing us to understand their frequency, distribution, and diversity across different stellar environments. Let's pause for a few seconds and give me a like for this video. Thank you so much. About a month from now, the interstellar object 3I Atlas will be on the far side of the Sun, making it unobservable from Earth. On October 3rd, 2025, it will pass within 29 million kilometers from Mars, and the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter will be able to image it with a pixel resolution of 30 kilometers. The time is ripe to summarize what we know so far about 3I Atlas. First. 3i Atlas does not feature a distinct cometary tail, based on the highest resolution image taken by Hubble Space Telescope on July 21, 2025. The image shows a fuzzy glow of scattered sunlight that does not extend to the far tail side of the object, away from the sun, any more than it extends on the side perpendicular to that direction. In fact, the only elongation of the glow is towards the sun, in the anti-tail direction. If the scattering of sunlight had been off dust particles, then these particles would have been pushed by solar radiation pressure from the sun-facing direction to the opposite side, and would have displayed a generic cometary tail stretched over a few arc seconds behind the object. Easily detectable by the Hubble Space Telescope, the fact that this tail is not observed suggests that 3i Atlas does not shed much dust particles with a size comparable to the wavelength of sunlight of order 0.5 micrometer. The spectrum of 3i Atlas shows substantial reddening. In the absence of submicrometer dust, the reddening must originate from the solid surface of 3i Atlas. This is not unexpected, since similar reddening is observed from the surfaces of Kuiper Belt objects, like Arakoth, which are similarly exposed to interstellar cosmic rays. To produce this reddening without shedding submicron dust particles, most of the sunlight reflected from 3i Atlas must originate at its surface. It then follows that the brightness of 3i Atlas implies a surface diameter of 20 kilometers for an albedo of 5%. That characterizes Kuiper belt objects. The flux detected by the SphereX Space Observatory at a wavelength of 1 micrometer from 3i Atlas on August 8, 12, 2025 
suggests an even larger nucleus with a diameter of 46 kilometers. This implies that the mass of 3I Atlas is a million times larger than that of the previous interstellar comet, 2I Borisov. This huge gap in mass is surprising, since we should have discovered numerous objects of the size of 2I Borisov before discovering a 46-kilometer interstellar object. Moreover, as I noted in my first paper on 3I Atlas, accessible here, the amount of rocky material per unit volume in interstellar space is smaller by a factor of 10,000 than the value needed to deliver into the inner solar system one giant rock of this size over the decade-long survey conducted by the Atlas Telescope. The SphereX images show 3I Atlas as a point source with no dust coma or tail. The observations reveal a cloud of carbon dioxide, CO2, around 3I Atlas out to distances of at least 34,000 kilometers, corresponding to a mass loss rate of about 70 kilograms per second. No water, H2O cloud was detected by SphereX, setting an upper limit of 4.5 kilograms per second on the water mass loss rate. This is an order of magnitude below the previous claims of water detection, which reported a mass loss rate of order 40 kilograms per second. Apparently, these early claims are not real, as I argued in a previous essay. The SphereX report notes that the lack of a bright water gas coma is puzzling, as 3I Atlas was not too far outside the solar system's water ice line at 2.5 AU during the observations. The glow around 3I Atlas in the Hubble Space Telescope image could originate from the reflection of sunlight by fragments of CO2 ice that 3I Atlas sheds rather than dust. These icy fragments evaporate in the sunlight and create the spherically symmetric CO2 cloud around 3I Atlas, as observed by SphereX. The modest level of CO2 mass loss amounts to the ablation of a millimeter thick layer from the surface of a 46 kilometer object over a period of 10 years. In other words, a relatively thin outer layer is sufficient to maintain the observed cloud of CO2 gas around 3I Atlas. What lies under this outer skin remains unknown. A way to resolve the discrepancy between the mass reservoir of rocky material in interstellar space and the unexpected discovery of a large object that measures tens of kilometers in diameter is that 3I Atlas was not drawn from a population of rocks on a random trajectory, but instead, its trajectory was designed to target the inner solar system. This possibility is consistent with the alignment of this trajectory with the orbital plane of the planets around the Sun, a coincidence of a part in 500 for a random occurrence. Given the puzzling characteristics of 3I Atlas, we should use all telescopes at our disposal on Earth and in space to observe it. As the sun turns on the heat on 3I Atlas in the coming months, it could reveal its true nature. Ecclesiastes was not aware of interstellar objects when he argued that there is nothing new under the sun. Life is a learning experience, and we should not exclude surprises. Paraphrasing Forrest Gump, science is like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get. We can look away, call it a comet, archive it, and move on. Or we can ask the harder question, what if this wasn't meant to be seen? What if it's not just passing through? What if this is contact, but on their terms? Because in the silence of space, there are no announcements, no greetings, only motion, only light, only the strange. So watch closely, because whatever burns inside 3 I Atlas is almost gone. And if you believe we should keep watching the skies, if you believe the unknown is worth chasing, subscribe. Leave a signal, because the sky was never empty, and now we finally see it.